we hit 300 subscribers and I've got a new lens. Hey folks, so um, welcome to a short walk through the uh, park at Pontyland. Um, we brought the 55-200 and we're going to give it a quick try out. I don't think it focused on there. But, um, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting because I can't be as disciplined as I want to be. Now the camera didn't focus on that. So let's have a walk through the park, see what we can uh, pick up. But with the 200 meter range, we really um, can we we can really zoom in on on people. Um, so we've got the truck in there. I can zoom into 200, and you can see the difference it makes. We'll just drop. Uh, Going to go negative one EV on that. Get the wall in. A little bit of the shop. And you can do things from quite a distance, so if uh, this is another way to get into uh, doing a bit of street photography by using um, quite a long range zoom lens. And also, we might be able to snap some wildlife along the way and get some quite interesting shots. So this lens is, as I say, 55 to 200. It's quite a fast lens, actually. It's f3.5 to uh, 4.8, so relatively speaking, um, quite quite a uh, quite, quite a bright lens quite a decent aperture so you can get a lot of uh, background separation you could potentially use it for portraits so this is pond Island. i haven't been here for about three years um i used to work here um at the local high school which is turned into a leisure center and we're going to sort of walk down to there because it's a leisure center now the school's closed it's uh, late evening, so I just wanted to see what the new building was like because obviously you're uh, because it's a public building, you're able to go on there. So I'll see who's in the park. That's the old uh, Merton Hall. I used to do uh, shows there and all sorts of things. Quite a uh, quite the old building. So again, I'm going to show you what kind of background separation we've got. That vehicle there. We'll bring the exposure back up so to um, bring some of the shadows in. We're gonna put it 55 mil, so we can probably go into 70 mil. Frame that car in there. We're at three points. Six, we'll do that. And then we're gonna do a portrait of those people. There, and we're zoomed into 135 mil there. So we'll walk on here because this goes to the tennis courts, I think. See what's along here. Well, I know what's along here, but you don't. So it's quite a small park, but there's a little walk and go along as well. Um, but this is. Uh, here in the UK, stage three of unlocking, so uh, we can hope they're open indoors now. Uh, and there'll be there's a lot more people about. So that is, I'm only I walk over that way, so I'm gonna go down there. I've never been down that path before, despite having worked here for quite some time. I'm going to stick my nose through here. Of course, we're close to sunset, and I didn't bring the um, the hood. I left the hood at home. I'll tell you what I do like, though. So now, what I was talking about before in the, the little video I said earlier was I was quite looking at uh, whether I can do diversify the videos I do. I'm quite liking that tree. And again, I'm going to drop the exposure down to get the sky in. I'm going to get a sort of medley of colour. I think I'm going to have to back up. We're going to stick at 55 mil. We're going to back up. We've got the tree in the foreground. 
some nice shadows there. And I want to try and get both the trees in. So I'm going to move across here to reframe the shot. And we'll get that person. They've disappeared. But that could be a good place to frame people, actually. So we'll get both the trees in there and try and get the colours. It's going to be a, a clash of colours. So you see if you can see that. Slightly underexposed. And where we go. And we've got this really long alleyway with some lovely shadows in. Shame if there's nobody walking along. And this is what I'm going to show you what you can do with the zoom. So again we're at 55 mil and we're going to focus towards it. Now we're going to stop down to f5.6 because we want to we don't want too much depth of field we're going to bring the shadow back up so mine is one third two thirds ev got those lovely overhanging trees we can bring the shadows back in post and watch what we can do with a 200 millimeter zoom so again we're gonna focus on the end there and we can really compress um, what, what we're doing and again if I do a landscape shot focus on the end there I can really bring the sides in There's a little bit of overexposure going on there so we'll just uh, stop down to minus one focus on the end where that car is So let's continue. Oh, look, it's a robin. That's our first bit of wildlife. Apart from what we're going to do is turn up the EV. I've never actually got this close to a bird before. Oh. We missed that. We did get some decent shots. I didn't realise what I'd done there was I'd got the focus lock on. So I'd locked the focus. Um, but we got a really, really nice shot. We can bring the shadows back in post. But that's my first one. It's f5.6. So didn't quite lock on there. Um, but I'm quite pleased with that. I would like to have a shallow depth of view, but a 5.6 gives us a better chance of getting everything in focus. So you can see it's a really versatile lens, these straight lenses. Oh, we missed the cyclists. Or did we? Because what we can do is we can go into 200. We can get them focused in on that guy with the blue on. With a 5.8. Again, as you can see from there, because we have the zoom lens on, folks on the guy with the little kid with the blue top, got the dog, got the people. And you can't do that with a 23mm lens. So there's loads of more street photography opportunities for this. And it doesn't make you lazy when you're looking for the shot. Um, by all means, I think, I think primes are fantastic for learning how to shoot. Um, I think they teach you a lot about composition. Um, but the flexibility of a zoom I'm only just starting to discover because we can bring things closer, we can compress the background. So we've got a little walk down here too, we can go down. Um, and then we can come back up to the school. I'm just hoping we'll find some cyclists or something. But again, I want to frame that guy with the. Uh, I'm going to zoom in. Frame them in between those two items. And now we've got them in full stride uh, at 100 mil. And there, that is the new building. So I'm loving the fact that I can get this compression 
and really, really zoom in on people because you know you you think people are out of range when you can do that. So again, I'm gonna focus on there, pre-focus. Gonna wait for those people to come by. And I think what could be quite good there is to get the green man and those people there. And now the uh, light's going to be straight into the camera. So it doesn't overheat. We've got a shot of them in from here. Ah, it's a fire engine. Let's track it. So we've got the, uh, the bridge across the river here. Uh, we can probably see if you can see that. What I'll do is I'll uh, see if we can show you that there. I'm going to go on zero EV. It's very difficult to frame that. I'm going to have to go plus one, actually, because it's in shadow. There we go. So I want to be... Make sure the autofocus is on that mode, so it doesn't do that what it did again. 55 now. Oh my goodness. Look at that, we can get some bowling action shots, people. So this is going to be a really sort of interesting shot. Get them all together, then we're going to get a portrait action shot. Bowling. We're going to have another go. I'm a bit closer this time, so let's try and get a better tracker. We've got a faster shot of speed. Just pan. And a canny shot there. Well, let's walk back down. Try and get a shot, one more shot from the front. <laughs> I'm getting some action shots. Come on, give me some action. <laughs> no. And this is where we can get in really close and get sort of a concentration back. Let's see if we can get a close up on those that little, that little cluster of balls there. So I'm going to go right in, focus on the balls, and I'm going to get their feet. So all the feet there with the ball. So all the feet in. 
gonna undo that. We're gonna just bring the exposure up. And get feet in. So we've got a foot shot. <laughs> and that's worked quite well because I've got the motion blur and the foot. We'll do a couple more and then we're gonna head back. So again, I want to get concentration on his face this time. So that's a shot of him sort of getting ready. Nice and sharp with all the people in the background. And then we're going to zoom back out a little bit to about 100 mil. Lock onto his face. And we're not going to pan, we're going to let him walk into the shot. Okay, so this is different, something different for street photography guys, isn't it? So he's ready again. So again, we'll do another concentration shot. So this lens has made us far, far more totally different opportunities. So, let's just do the last bit. Ah, compression again. Look, see, bridge people. So again, I'm gonna get down here, we're gonna frame. Maximum zoom, lock on tracking, frame under the tree. Photograph. Done. Those runners in the distance, I'm going to do the zoom. I'm going to try and... We've got three shots fired off there. And we actually did get them with the lamp in, and considering I didn't have long to frame that, that worked quite well. So, folks. It's been great fun trying out a new lens. Um, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed a slightly different pod walk in the little village of Pontelland. Um, as always, please do uh, comment below. I'd really do, uh, as per my previous video, want to uh, know what people uh, want to see developing on the channel, what kind of fit things they like what they dislike, you know, so feel free to point out what you did like in the video, what you did like in the video, and please do discuss below. Um, so as always, thank you for watching. Please uh, remember to uh, subscribe and click the bell for notifications, and if you enjoyed what you saw, please do uh, like the video. I'll catch you all later, folks. Bye.